Metformin is a drug that's given to type 2 diabetics who have high blood sugar. Mm -hmm. And what was discovered by accident was looking at people who take metformin and looking at what other diseases they get or don't get in this case. And, of course, people are healthier with their uh, blood sugar levels. Mm -hmm. But those people also live longer than people that don't take metformin on average. Mm -hmm. And they're also protected against heart disease and cancer and uh, frailty. Mm -hmm. And so I, I'm really excited about metformin as a way for people who don't yet have type 2 diabetes to slow down aging and protect against those other diseases. Mm -hmm. And we've calculated that by taking metformin, you could, that's a lot of hearts, thank you. By, yeah. by taking metformin, you could make people live a few years longer at least, maybe 10, but at least a few. And that would save the U.S. economy or a value to the U.S. economy of $86 trillion over the next few decades. So I know we're not into ec economies in here and, and money here, but often people think, well, what's going to happen if we have all these older people? Well, if they're healthier and they live longer, they cost much less. And there's so much money that we waste on practicing sick care, yeah. not health care. Yeah. Um, so I take a gram of metformin most days of the week. Sometimes I don't because I'm one of the 20% of people that have a rough time with it in my stomach. I need a bit of some, a bit of food in my stomach to be able to, to tolerate it. But I am going to try the, the slow-release version mm -hmm. or the purer forms. Um, yeah, we were talking about that. Yeah, yeah. my stuff isn't uh, necessarily ultra-pure, so I'm going to try that. But metformin works in part by turning on the mitochondria, making my, mitochondria more energetic and more numerous. And that's really important because having more energy allows your cells to repair better. Mm -hmm. But by the way, the metformin also activates these genes that I work on, sirtuin, so it's a, a double impact. Uh, another question, actually, that came up quite a bit before the live, just uh, when people had sent in via text and through uh, the direct messages, was about berberine. And I also saw that question come up a lot just in the course of this life as well as an alternative to metformin for people who are trying to take something that's a little bit more natural, um, if that's where their comfort zone is when it comes to supplementation or yeah. supplementation. <laughs> it's a great option. And we've studied berberine in my lab and it, it works really well in, in the animal studies for diabetes and for revving up mitochondria. Mm -hmm. uh, and in fact, I used to take berberine before I had access to metformin which requires prescription berberine you can buy uh, at any pharmacy or online. Right. Uh, again, you want to look for purity and trusted brands, GMP. Mm -hmm. But berberine should be yellow, uh, not white. Uh, but I think it's a great alternative. And if you look at the science behind it, there have been some really convincing human studies of people taking one to two grams a day. Mm -hmm. And they have benefits with their blood sugar, which is similar to what metformin does. It's slightly less potent, of course. It's not a drug, but I think it's a great alternative. Um, is there, a, and and you may not be able to answer this question, but is there a specific amount that you would recommend to uh, achieve the same results if someone chooses to use berberine instead of metformin? Uh, yeah. Um, so in, in case um, my colleagues and employer are listening, none of this is a recommendation. Um, I don't do that. None. It's scientific information and my personal view. Okay. Um, and, and always consult a doctor. And you want to do blood tests to make sure that this is working and you're not hurting your body, particularly the liver. Um, AST and ALT are two things you can measure to make sure your liver is doing well. And I always do that. I've been monitoring myself for over a decade to make sure that anything that I try is not doing me harm because I need to know that before I talk about it with other people. And I know, mm -hmm. Serena, you're the same. Yes, very person. much the same. For, uh, for those of you who don't know what we always, I always run labs, have labs done on you know, any clients before I make recommendations. And it's something that I do regularly, but I recommend other people do regularly as well, at least every six months, if not three, so that you know what's happening inside your body. Yeah, so the doses in the clinical trials are one to two grams a day. Uh, again, I think it, it's not very soluble, so you, you probably would want to mix it or eat it with food for mm -hmm. it to get absorbed. Mm -hmm.